everybody and welcome to another quick skills tutorial. My name is Dawn and I am with nerdygirlcreative.com and this week we're going to be taking a trip into Adobe Illustrator and we're going to learn how to vectorize our photos and images using the tool Image Trace. Uh, this is a great tool to use when vectorizing any photos or images very quickly, um, whether you're doing a regular photo or hand lettering. Um, it works really great and it's really quick. Let's jump right in. We're going to come up here to our window and then we're going to come down to image trace. All right, and we're going to be working with a couple of the different tools in here. We're going to work from the top and work our way all the way down to the black and white logo. Um, now to set up our image, we want to make sure that we don't have a huge and giant image. Um, if you know anything about working with vectors is that they tend to require a lot of uh, memory because they are vectors. They're, you know, mathematical equations to make up shapes. So they can be scaled infinitely up and down. So you want to make sure that your image is small enough so that you are not going to either one, crash your computer or two, it's not going to take you an hour to render your photo. So kind of, you know, make it smaller. Um, and since it's going to be a vector, you can, you know, scale it right back up and it's not going to lose any quality. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start at the top with the high fidelity photo. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And I have a fairly fast computer, but as you can see, it's still going to take a little bit of time for it to render. What happened? Well, it doesn't really look like a whole lot happened and that's kind of the point. Um, so when you have a very detailed image like this, the um, to keep everything very detailed, you would always use the high fidelity. Now, when you um, mess with this uh, colors up here in the paths, it's going to, you know, create more paths and therefore it's going to be more complicated and will use more memory. So just keep that in mind when you're using this. But I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like up close because then that's when you can really see the difference. All right, so as you can see, we've gotten really close. And as you can see, it's a bunch of small shapes of color that are going to make up this entire image. Um, so it's really good if you have a photo that's going to be going up on a billboard or anything that's going to be blown up in very large size, you want to make sure that you have a graph, a vector of it, um, so that you can blow it up without it being, you know, get that weird grainy pixelation that, um, regular photos would have. So. All right. So now we're going to come down here to low fidelity photo. So it's going to give us sort of you know, I still have pretty good quality, but it's going to have a lot less paths and it's going to be a little bit more abstract in shape. As you can see, everything is a little bit less defined. All right, so we're going to go ahead and keep on moving. We're going to go down to three colors, which is going to just um, pull out what it thinks should be in which three colors and it's going to go ahead and render the image. All right, and as you can see, it has this nice uh, lighter teal here, this sort of darker teal, and then the tan for the flower. Um, so this would make a really nice wallpaper or background. Um, it's, it's very pretty. All right, next is gonna be six colors. And then there you can see, kind of pulls in a lot more of the blues here. It's pulled in the green. Um, so this is a very interesting um, version of this photo as well. All right, and then 16 colors, which is gonna give us a lot more colors than um, the three and the six, but quite a bit less than the low fidelity photo. All right, now we're gonna move on to our shades of gray. This one's gonna give you a lot of definition, kind of sort of like the high fidelity you would and the low fidelity, but it's gonna be all black and white, which is kind of nice. So um, this, is a, this, is, this is one of my favorite ones to use. All right, and then black and white logo. Um, something weird is going to happen when I hit this because there is no black and white. So black and white would normally be used, I personally use it when I am vectorizing hand lettering because you have a stark contrasting color usually between the lettering color and then the white paper that you're working on. Um, so it's gonna, you know, if it doesn't have any black or whites to pull from, it's gonna sort of make up its mind. All right, and as you can see, ooh, it did nothing. <laughs> it did something really weird. So how to kind of fix this and play with it. And it's, it kind of gives you a nice little silhouette. You can pull up the paths here. And then as you can see, 
that kind of gives you a really cool and interesting black and white flower um, silhouette and it's it's really cool. Now I actually want to show you how to expand the image once you've finished what you're doing. Um, so I'm actually going to go back up here to high fidelity photo. Go ahead and come up here to expand and it's going to go ahead and expand it into all its various shapes. So as you can see, it has created lots and lots and lots of shapes. You can come in there and change all the colors of these different individual shades and shapes that you have. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to these videos. I create a new quick skills tutorial every week, so don't forget to check those out. And also head over to nerdygirlcreative.com and watch some more videos, grab a couple freebies, and you guys create something amazing.